Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, our stars are finding out about camouflage in most unusual ways. Johnny Crockett is making tools out of bits of old wood. But first, the pigeons are on the maze. Be prepared to be amazed by George Digweed. It's our Christmas catch-up with George, who is looking particularly festive, if not fashion conscious. To be honest with you, I couldn't care what it looks like, as long as my head's warm. On a crisp December afternoon, he's taking time out from shooting to do some shooting. At this time of year, the 20 times world champion is flat out looking after his sporting days. But for George, this really is R&R, &R, with a bit of pest control thrown in. It's always a nice to have a, have a break and get out of it, have a shot with the, when, the, when the season's on, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's really hard work for us at the moment, and uh, especially this year. So to get out and have a shot at the weekend is just a nice break. He's been shooting this particular spot on the English North Downs for a decade and it's some of the most challenging sport around. When you're shooting pigeons like this, this is where uh, you know, your technique has to be absolutely sound because you know, you'll get a good pigeon come in fairly close to you, uh, come upwind or you know, swing around over the top at 15, 20 yards and then the next pigeon you shoot out will be 75 yards. So your technique has to be sound and you have to be confident in being able to judge your distance and judge your lines. It's not about a big bag today, it's about having some fantastic shooting and uh, you know we should get that. George doesn't have any decoys out, just a magnet to his left at about 65 yards. He is tucked in the shadow of the wood behind us, which is again about 60 yards away. It's worth mentioning these distances to get a sense of perspective. 90% of the birds George is shooting today are more than 60 yards away, with some nearing 100. And you know when George is pleased. Oh, that was a beauty. Oh, what a beauty. Oh, what a pigeon. Look at that. Oh, and again. Oh. Still enjoy a good shot, George. Absolutely. No point in doing it if you can't enjoy it. Now, it cannot be denied that 2012 has been a fantastic year for British sporting achievement. And with the BBC's Sports Personality of the Year coming up, surely a man who has been world champion so many times in his chosen discipline would get some sort of recognition. Or maybe not. I can't imagine why they'd ask me this year. They haven't asked me many other years. It was a nice one. They haven't asked me many other years. I went three times and... The last time I went was in Birmingham and they put me up in the ceiling. Um, they put me up in the ceiling and, uh, you know, it's just a waste of time. I hope uh, Pete Wilson goes and gets some good coverage. You know, I hope that he gets invited to it and I hope they interview him and, and I hope that, uh, you know, he comes across well because he's got an ideal opportunity to promote the sport. The one thing Pete didn't have to worry about during the games was a cold cartridge. George will now explain why it is important to look after your shells during the winter months. Yeah, if you look up the barrels there, just out, up into the sky, you can see all the residue left up in there, uh, which, is, which is where the cartridges have been kept in damp conditions. And, uh, you know, the, the, the powder's got a little, little damp, so they, they burn a bit slower. Doesn't really affect the performance hugely but I mean obviously it's not ideal now these are some that I've had on the these are some that I've had on the radiator and you can see now there's no residue up there at all George warned us we'd see lots of birds today and he has not disappointed. His friend Will described today's shooting as like the best presented highest pheasant drive and it lasts for four hours. He's not wrong. Many people would find shooting at these ranges too extreme, but George makes it look easy. 
At this time of year, George gets a lot of invites to shoots all over the country, as well as looking after his own. One thing that he's noticed is an upsetting trend that some guns are not using their second shot to ensure the bird is dead. You, know, you see people that shoot in a flush of pheasants, they hit the first one and then go straight on to another bird. Well, the first one's not dead, but well, they should finish that bird off. Um, and if I'm shooting, I will always finish off. If I've hit a bird, I'll always finish it off rather than go to another one. With the sun dropping fast, George starts to tidy up. It's going to take a while. We've done a good job here today, killing pigeons uh, that are going out to the rape. Um, it's been quite a difficult day, I would say. Um, but uh, no, it's been a very, very good sporting day. And uh, when they come like that, there's no finer bird in the world. With three other guns keeping the birds moving, the group has shot slightly more than George predicted, an impressive 813. George shot 140, once again proving he is king of the hill. From birds in the air to a bird in a suit, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. A British animal rights organisation plans a day of action on the 15th of December. It claims its activists, all two of them, will be leafleting outside the British newsagent WH Smith across the UK to protest against the sale of shooting magazines to young people. WH Smith recently went back on a policy to age-restrict shooting magazines. You can order your own leaflets and postcards via the Animal Aid website, animalaid.org.uk. They make great loft insulation. Bear hunting with dogs is to be banned in the American state of California. Some 1,700 black bears out of a population of up to 39,000 are shot in California each year. Almost half are with the help of hounds. Hunters are required by law to eat the meat. But hunters who trace their lineage back to George Washington, Daniel Boone and Theodore Roosevelt will only be allowed to use guns, not hounds, from the 1st of January 2013. Gun crime across Scotland fell by 20% between 2010 and 2011, according to the latest figures. The Scottish Government says there were five murders involving guns and 11 attempted murders. Scotland faces a ban on air guns, however, the figures show that just 195 out of an estimated half a million air guns in circulation in Scotland were used in crimes in 2011. Sporting Shooter magazine has launched a new website. As well as news and reviews, there's also video content starring the likes of Andy Crow, Mark Gilchrist and Roy Lupton. Other UK magazines are also seeing the benefits of promoting shooting and field sports through YouTube. Countryman's Weekly magazine is now popping our films on their Facebook page. And finally, it's the third yellowfin tuna record we've reported on this year. A Californian man reeled in a 440 pound tuna, but it won't go into the books because someone else touched the rod. Boat captain Justin Fleck said he helped angler John Petrescu negotiate round a bow anchor for insurance reasons. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Well, we've all got a lot to learn about camouflage. I've been off finding out if it's really necessary. Camouflage. What works? Does it work? We've had a few instances over the year where it didn't seem to matter what our guys were wearing. In early autumn, Dom Holdham had a wonderful wildlife moment with roe deer grazing up to within just a few yards. He did that by standing still. Then there was Roy Lupton. Standing in the open had roebuck charging straight towards him in the rut. So we've asked some of the gang for some guidance. For starters, wallflower Mark Gilchrist has been a long-time supporter of blending into the background. If you're keeping still, it will help you to conceal yourself. But if you can't sit still, it doesn't matter what you're wearing, they're going to see you. You can be camouflaged, you know, you can wear one of those ridiculous, they're called ghillie suits. You know, the ones with all the hair hanging off them. They'll still, still see you because you're moving around. They see movement. Uh, most birds, I think, are colour blind or they've got poor colour vision and what they see is movement. Also, if you wait till the pigeons are just about settling and they're, and they're flying right, if you get up, it doesn't matter what you're wearing, they can't see you because they're focused on making sure they're not hitting the ground. 
We've asked Mark to take okay. camo to a new level. Is it the Emperor's new clothes? Get on, get on. My bum looks big in there. <laughs> right, is it? Go on, get on. Um, that's the thing I love about Labradors over girlfriends is uh, girlfriend now would just go mental. Have you ever turned up to a dinner party dressed like this? They don't like it. But Dawn, she just thinks the whole thing's a lot more fun. If what you say is true, you should be able to shoot some pictures like that. Yeah, yeah no problem at all. My modelling career never really took off. I've, I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to swing through properly because um, I've never really worn a things that it's not really, I don't think this isn't my size, is it? I'm going to keep it though. I certainly don't want it back. Quite offended by that actually. We'll come back to Mark later and see how he's getting on. Broadly, it comes down to what birds and animals can actually see. Do the colours matter or is it more about movement? Andy Crow has also been known to wear camo, but today he's going to try and shoot a few crows whilst wearing a high-vis jacket. Our budget couldn't stretch to two mankinis. As you can see, I'm wearing... Well, this isn't exactly camouflage. Just had a pigeon come across the field. I've stood up and shot it. Now, you can't get any brighter than this, can you? So... Provided you've got a good hide, keep still, come up when you're ready to take the shot, take the shot. <laughs> who, who would go pigeon shooting in this? You wouldn't go pigeon shooting standing in the wood or walking down the hedgerow, but if you've got a good hide, back to field craft again, good hide, keep still, no trouble at all. Staying low inside his expertly built hide, even with the sun shining directly on him, the crows and pigeons are ambushed by Andy. He loves his camo, but shooting is as much about understanding your quarry. Staying low also means Andy has no need to wear a hat. Even rock gods with glossy hair can get away with it if the birds are hungry and they stay relatively still. Oh boy, how's it going down there? Of course, being spotted is just one way of losing that shooting opportunity. There's also your aroma. Sensible folks stalk with the wind in their face, but you can be sent free. Shampoo and washes are big business in the United States, but there are limits. Now I'm off to one of the closest things I know to a fox, Mike Powell. I've only been at his home in Devon for five minutes when Mike spots a rabbit. This is an ideal opportunity for the sporting rifle magazine expert to show how the clothes he stands up in are as good a camo as any. How close can he get? What did you get to within five yards? Yes, about that. And, uh, and it, it, it can't have been, it must have known. Oh yes. But if you watch animals, you can see their, their reactions to what's going on. And when we used to shoot foxes with shotguns, you could move out to them either in daylight or night by watching very carefully what their reactions were and reacting to their reactions. Clearly, it isn't always going to work. You're not going to walk up to every rabbit or every fox or every deer. It doesn't happen. But you can get away with it quite often. So how good is modern camo? I hide a series of camo and green jackets in a hedge. Given that Mike is part man, part fox, let's walk towards them and see which he spots first. So the one I can pick out here just about is the hardwoods. Um, again, that one's slightly out of context because it's in green and it is a brown camo. But um, otherwise the others are still not visible. Yes, I can just about spot the tweed. We're about 20 yards out. Um, yes, at the battered barber I can see, but nobody else would if they didn't know there was something in the hedge. So who's the winner? I'd have to say... Oh dear, that's difficult. <laughs> I'd have to say the uh, Rivers West. For Mike, nothing beats being absolutely still. If you keep still, it almost is ir irrelevant what you're wearing. If you keep still long enough, um, they'll generally relax. Not always, but they will relax. There seem to be ever more camo patterns on the market, but where will it all end?
So, how is Mark getting on with the pigeons? It is a wonder, actually, when I dress like this, that I'm ever really single. Camouflage does have its place, and next year we will be testing it in places where it matters. From hiding out in the woods to camping out in the woods, Johnny Crockett from Survival School has got a new method for making a mallet. If you are setting up in the woods, you don't have to bring all your tools with you. Some of them you can make right here on the spot. What we're going to make is a mallet. Now, the irony of making a mallet is that ideally you need a mallet to make a mallet. So this is my mallet to make a mallet. It's just a one foot length of fairly thick hazel. And I'm going to make my mallet out of this. I'm going to split it in half and this end is going to be my mallet and this end I'm going to make into four tent pegs that I'm going to use to put my tarp up later on. I'll measure it out, always measure twice and cut once. So that's where I'm going to make my, my mark, peg it down. You can hear the change of noise as it gets deeper and then it's about to fall. Perfect. Now then, I'm going to measure this one out again. As it happens, where the, where, where the bark has ripped here, that is about the same sort of size as my hand. So the mallet I'm going to make, I need to have a handle about, about that long. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it round. Again, I'm going to put my foot on there for a bit of control. And I want to cut in about a couple of centimetres, maybe a centimetre and a half. Turn it round. I keep turning it round until I do a full 360 and now I'm going to revert back to using my knife and the baton that I showed you earlier. So remember that's the handle so that goes uppermost. Take, take the knife out of the sheath and what we're going to do is we're going to put our knife just on the edge, but up to the hilt, so that when I strike down, the cut that I'm making, the wedge that I'm taking out, should stop when I get down to this stop cut that I've cut with my saw. So I just need to make this a more ergonomic handle now. As you can see, it's got lots of ridges on it. So just cutting out to the side, just going to make it a bit, a bit rounder, really. So that it fits in my hand and it becomes more of a, more of a pleasure to use. Putting the, put the craft, if you like, back into bushcraft. There we are. Lovely, but just to give it the pièce de résistance, or as Del Boy might say, a piece of resistance. It's going to bevel the top of this. It's going to stop it from splitting and from mushrooming when I hit the pegs into the ground a little bit later. So there we go. I could even, if I wanted, start to carve my name on it and do whatever else I want. Lovely. That's me done for the mallet. Now from woodwork to the wider world of hunting on YouTube, it is 
Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Straight off to Poland for this clip of a young male wild boar. Leszek Kaminski, who sent us this clip and posted it on YouTube, says the video was taken during a commercial hunt where he was a host, which is why there is no shot. Of course, hunting cultures vary. In the UK, the host is allowed to shoot too. Now, you may not be a bow hunter, but here is a useful film by Derek Grebner87 called TGO How to Build the Deadly arrow. Anyone who thought a cloth yard of English ash was enough will see the error of their ways as they tangle with a werewolf single right bevel 200 grain broadhead, carbon express pile driver 450, blazer veins fletched right helicolon cresting wrap to be twanged from a Martin Firecat 400 set at 75 pounds. The word twanged is my own. Viewer Doug Barber sends in RMR bear tagging. It's an item about tagging hibernating bears with Canadian comedian Rick Mercer. Now be warned that North American humour relies on canned laughter, but it is still a warm and friendly piece about wildlife management that includes three cute bear cubs and no shooting. Let's stay in Canada, but with a British fishing agent, Fish Skeena offers its roundup of the 2012 season in huge steelhead and trophy Chinook salmon fly fishing in British Columbia. The footage isn't true HD, but the fish are. Viewer Benedict Bucher kindly sent us a video the other day. This week he sends dozens. They will keep Keep us going for months. Thank you, Benedict. This one is Monster Lake Trout Ice Fishing by Jigheads TV. The YouTube channel Horn250 has a fan in Jeff Pickford who asks us to mention it here. This is Autumn Squirrel Hunting, Horn250's first outing on the squirrels this autumn. If you like your rabbiting soundtrack to be Ooh La La by British electronica and hip hop band The Wise Guys, you will enjoy Rabbit Hunt 0.17CZ and 0.22 Magnum by the Decoy Boys. They are shooting rabbits in silage, hay, and wheat fields. Crop damage is there for all to see. Sam Badham, also known as SRS Power, sends us his new film Pigeon Shooting with the Whirly. There were a lot of pigeons feeding on the lower field when he arrived, so he decided to build the hide there. As soon as Sam was set up, they all cleared off. Still, allow us to be pompous for a moment. Good work, Sam. We like a film with a sense of story. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly Top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well if you've been watching this on youtube don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button which i'm reliably informed is now down there or go to our shows page www.youtube.com slash show slash britain and click to subscribe to just this program and not all our films or go to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can click to like us on facebook or follow us on twitter or down on the bottom right, there's the constant contact box. Pop your email address into that and we will contact you about our programme, which is out every Wednesday, 7pm. This has been Field Sports Britain.